Zachary, you're the leader. You all follow Zachary. As Pastor Jason's transition, I just thought I would share real quick about the Holy Spirit. Today is Pentecost Sunday. We celebrate. Um, wow, Holy Spirit. Yeah, every, every Sunday here we celebrate Holy Spirit. He's always welcome to do and be who he is in this place. Back in Genesis 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. So, Holy Spirit's first show is in Genesis 1. Holy Spirit is the third part of the Trinity, Father God, Jesus the Son, and Holy Spirit. He is comfort. He is the greatest counsel. Uh, whoa. He reveals all truth. I remember in high school studying for exams, and my mom would say, just ask Holy Spirit to remind you, because in the Word it says, Holy Spirit will bring back to your mind everything you need. And you have no idea. I would study, 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 and still freeze on a test, but Holy Spirit would bring me the answer. I was a BC student, not the greatest, but it did get me through. And many times I would just wait, and he would just kind of show me the answer. So he is our greatest help. He is here to guide us, lead us, direct us. It is by the Holy Spirit. Um, I love that. There's nothing to be weirded out or freaked out about, about him. I know years ago, as I grew up, people had, my own grandma had some wild things of her own opinion of what Holy Spirit was. <laughs> and, um, you know, when it's done in balance and you have a right relationship, there, it's just uh, smooth sailing, um, brings your life great joy um, because you're following him. You know, when, when he asks you to go somewhere, you just go and be obedient. He gives you the courage to do that as well. Anyone here want to share a quick thing of, of their Holy Spirit experience? We have about a minute. We just a few weeks ago, we had about 15 people receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is where our gifts come from. Um, wow, what are all the gifts? Prophecy, uh, tongues, healing, um, what is it? Interpretation of tongues. That's right. Oh, I just thought of, um, now I just lost my thought. Uh, oh, huh? Remember, I did. So Holy Spirit's the one. Remember last week when I spoke on the fruits of the Spirit? Hey, guys, just ask God. I don't know what happened. It was, it was through my encounter in Brownsville. But it says that the Holy Spirit's the one who gives us the fruits of the Spirit. So that's awesome. I thought, well, that was just confirmation when I spoke last week. So um, Holy Spirit is an amazing friend. Um, get close. Get deeper with the Lord. Just keep asking for all he has for you, and you, you get to have your life flourish. How's that? And you get to flourish and build the kingdom of heaven as well. Amen. Amen. Maybe I should talk a minute about the water. I love how the Holy Spirit represents the water. Hallelujah. And we have no doubt him and Jesus are in charge over there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to walk out. <laughs> Let me do it again. Thank you, Shelly. <laughs> no, really. Jesus walked all the way to the cross in love. He walked all the way to the cross in love. He saw what the people were doing. He saw how the people were out there. They were hollering, crucify, 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 kill him. His mom was crying. There was other people that were around crying, but there was others that were just wanting him dead. Jesus knew the price that he had to pay, and he walked all the way to the cross in love and with love. 
What an amazing God that we serve. What an amazing Savior that we serve. And not only did he walk all over the cross with love, he, when he was on the cross, his arms were spread out. And before he took his last breath, he said, Father, and this is for you and for me, he said, Father, forgive them all for what they're doing. For they don't know what they're doing. Aren't you grateful for that this morning? Aren't you grateful that God forgave you and is still forgiving you for your mistakes and your problems and your failures and your downfalls and everything that goes along with it? Can we turn the house lights up all the way? Father, we just thank you right now for your love, for your mercy, for your grace this morning. Father, you're here. We feel you. We know that you're here. We just thank you for your presence always being in this house. And we glorify you. We magnify you in that. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. My name is Jason Abney. If you don't know, this is my wife, Pastor Shelly Abney. We are, we live here in Martinsville. We've been here for about five years. And I want to, I want to go over the whole, um, whole process of what happened and what this series is about. Love is the topic that we're talking about today, but the whole series goes through love. And if we can flip through these, if we're ready, love identity will be next week then freedom, then encounter. Amen, amen. These are the four pillars that this church stands on, this body stands on. Love, identity, freedom, and encounter. And all those together, if you take the first letter, it spells life. Shelly and I were in um, North Carolina, and God gave us the vision of the, the word life of love or, the, or the, the, the phrase life of love. And we asked him what that was about. And he said, this is what I want you to name the church that I'm sending you to. We had no idea what God was going to do. Literally, we were going to be in um, Destin, Florida. We had been shopping for homes for several years in Destin, Florida. We finally get this prime opportunity and offer it a church to come and be at this church and work full time at this church and get paid, paid full time. So we're taking them up on their offer. We live in a 43 foot RV at the time and uh, we had just a, po- a spot to park the RV just, just blocks off of the beach. We could see the ocean and we thought this is the great plan. We're excited to see what God's going to do with us here. We get back to Indiana to tell all of our five boys and our grandkids that we're moving to Florida. And, but God put a little hiccup in the plan, and sometimes he does that. Sometimes he puts little, little wrenches into your plan because he has a plan for you. And I know that we were, we, I, remember, I remember clearly I was doing a floor. I was, I was doing a hardwood floor, and I was laying it down. And, and, I, and it's just the, the, the Lord speaks to me in so many different ways. I've heard him audible. I've seen him face to face. He's talked to me. It's in my spirit. I feel it in my spirit. It's through a word that I see or through someone that gives me a word. He speaks to us all in so many ways, but we have to understand how he speaks to us and be, and to understand that we just have to know how he speaks specifically to us. So for me, I'm I'm there and I'm, I'm, I'm doing this floor and all of us, I heard the Lord say, will you go to Martinsville? And I'm like, I just, I heard it and I thought, well, maybe I misheard that. Go to Martinsville. Um, because Martinsville is the last, I'm going to tell you right now, Martinsville is the last place I wanted to ever be. My wife is from here, and it's a lot, I mean, I like, I'm like, no, I will, ne- I mean, I said never. And that's like a word curse on yourself. Never say never, because that's almost like cursing yourself. Oh, really? And so I said, I will never go to Martinsville. And um, so I didn't even tell Shelly because um, I, I was just like, I won't go to Martinsville. So I know he said that, and I was just trying his voice. And so the second day, I'm at the job, and I hear, will you go to Martinsville? I'm like, no, Lord, I am not going to go to Martinsville. What is in Martinsville? And I'm crying at this point. I mean, I'm crying, and I'm calling other people other than my wife to say, what is this going on? We're supposed to be doing this, this, and this. And I hear God say, go to Martinsville. And I'm like, I'm not going to go to Martinsville. And um, so day three, I'm like, I, I said, I said, I'm doing the floor again, and I heard God again. Will you go to Martinsville? And I said, no. <laughs> Three times I said no. I said, what's in Martinsville? He said, I have something for you in Martinsville. He has something for me and he has something for you here. We're all here today for a specific reason. We're not just, we're not just the people who have gathered together. We are handpicked and chosen for a mission that God has set us on. And that's a mission that it's in this region. A mission that God has set us on in this region. 
Jesus walked all the way to the cross in love, and we should do the same thing. We should walk in love everywhere that we go. So I finally said, Lord, and there's a whole story behind this, but I finally said, yes, I will do it. And here we are in Martinsville. We started out the park. We went from the park to the youth center, from the youth center over here, from over here to here. And here we are today. And I'm grateful we've been in this building for about a year. We have a four-year lease left on the building. So I'm grateful that God has provided us a place. And I know he's going to continue to pour into this house. And he's got plans for us. But we have to understand the plans that he has for us. And that's, that's the whole purpose of this series is for you to understand why we're here and what we're doing here and what the four pillars are. When you have a pillar, it, it holds something up. It's something that's structure that holds something up. And God is the foundation of this pillar. If the Holy Spirit wasn't here or wouldn't be here, as my wife had said to God, she said, Lord, if you're not going to be there, if the presence is not going to be there, we're not going to be there. And I stand true to that. The moment that God walks away from this ministry is the moment that I will be gone. Because it's so important that we learn how to house the presence of God, not only here in this facility, but in our own lives. And when you walk through love and you walk love out, you learn how to host the presence of God and also you learn how to house the presence of God. We went from a place of hosting God for the events that were coming up and all the different Sundays that were coming, and we went from a place of hosting him to housing him. And housing the presence. How many of you felt the Lord this morning? I know he's here. I've had so many people walk in this building and they've said, I've never felt the presence of God like I feel the presence here. They've been in spirit-filled churches their whole life. And they've never felt the presence of God like they felt it here. Why? Are we special? God is not a respecter of persons. So are we special? What's going on with that? It's we've caught on to something. We've learned how to house the presence of God through loving people. We love people well. You all love people well. When people come to this place, they say, I've never felt love like I felt it here. I've never felt someone just embrace me like I felt it here. There's been some that have walked away and not received that love because they don't know how to receive love. But let's keep loving even though they don't know how to receive love. One day God will get a hold of them and they will be able to receive love like God wants to give it to them. We're here and I want you to know Jesus walked all the way. And I want you to remember this phrase. He walked all the way to the cross in love. We're going to be held accountable. I want, you to, I want to remind you, you will be held accountable for every action, every word, everything that you do. Outside of the will of God, you will be held accounted for. We're here to minister to one another first. And this is my goal. This is one of the goals that I have had from the beginning. And I don't know the full plan that God has for us. Listen, he has a super big plan. And I'll tell you, there's a stone that he's rolling in front of us. And he's crushing every obstacle in front of us. And he said he would do that. And I remember there was a time I went to look around the stone to see what God had. And he threw his arm out like this. You know, like when the grandma would before seatbelts and they would throw their arm out like this and, and it would be like an airbag for you and uh, he threw his arm like that and he said stop if you see what I have for you you'll blow it let's don't get ahead of God so when you ask me what's God doing my answer is going to be I know as much as what I'm telling you and I'll tell you the rest when I get the answer maybe you'll get it before I will I don't know what all he's doing I just know we're supposed to be in the moment right now of what he's doing right now in this moment today in this moment and he wants to teach us how to love one another first we have to learn how to love this body these people before we ever go out into the highways we have to learn how to love one another before we learn how to go out and reach them. Because if we can't love one another, if we can't get along here, we're not going to get along out there. It has to start here. It has to start in this house, in this body, Life of Love Ministry Center. Listen, I want you to know this. If you, if you have your Bibles, if my thing works here, um, in, in um, Ephesians 5, it says this in the Message Bible. It says, watch what God does. Watch what he does. Pay attention to what he does. And then do it. 
Like children who learn a proper behavior from their parents. Are you teaching your kids right? Listen, to be in the house of the Lord, to be on your knees, to be in prayer, to show them the lifestyle they're supposed to live before God. So when they get a little older, they understand what it is and they move further in progression than you did. They learn the behaviors of their parents. Mostly what God does is love you. That's his greatest thing for you. That's his greatest gift for you is to love you. Keep company with him and learn, listen, learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loves us. Pay attention to that. He loves with a great love. It says his love, it's not cautious, but it's, it's extravagant. His love is extravagant toward you and toward me. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. So love like that. Love like that. That's how we're supposed to love one another. We're here to help each other. Listen, we're in bondage. Some of us are in bondage, and it might not be something major, but it might be something major. We're here as a body to see what is everyone's going through. I mean, most of you probably, and, and, and we're going to change this because this is the series we're going to change this. You need to know a little bit about each other. So exchange some phone numbers, call each other, do some things together. But we need to know about each other because we need to help each other break off some bondages. Some people might be addicted to drugs, addicted to, to pornography. We're no, there's no shame in that, and we don't want to bring shame over that because shame comes from the enemy. But it's not right, and it's not true, and it's not healthy for your life. So as a body, we need to come together and show each other how to get out of this bondage by bringing Jesus on as our Lord and Savior. We need to be able to walk out of the bondage and be completely free. And we're going to talk about love, identity, freedom, encounter, how to get all these things, how to receive all these things. Today, we're talking about love. God's design is the best design. There's a lot of churches in this community. There's a bunch of churches, a lot of churches. I mean, over 55 churches in this community. We can't hold everybody here. I mean, we can't. We've had enough people come through this place that this place would be overpacked if they were all here today. So every pastor in this region has a mission and a goal, and God's got something for them. Maybe some of them got out of whack a little bit. Maybe some of them got off track a little bit. And maybe some of them, their fire has been put out by the congregation. You can have a pastor that's on fire for Jesus and a congregation have a big old bucket of water to dump on him and put it out. We can't be people like that. We have to be people that are on fire with our pastors, with God. And there's plenty of pastors in this region that had a call before mine, that come to this region before I did. And they had a mission to do and somehow it's been snuffed out. And all of a sudden what we're doing looks abnormal. It looks abnormal. This is what we're doing. This is normal. This is normal church. Operating out of the five-fold ministry is normal church, how God designed it to be. And some people look at us, some churches, some bodies, even though they look at us this way, it doesn't neglect the fact that they are Christians and they love Jesus, but they look at us and they go, wow, that's different. They got water in their, they got water. They got a big baptismal thing in their pool. And they get people in it all the time. And there's healings that come out of it. Wow, there's people that get healed of cancer and deaf ears and blind eyes. And they can walk and they're crushed like this and they can stand up. They're like, that's weird. That's abnormal. No, that's normal. That's normal. We've just been so far in the abnormal, below normal, we don't even understand what normal is. That's normal for us to operate that way. The water is a great thing. Study it. Water is everything in the Bible. Everything is about water. It's everything's about water in the Bible. And I'm grateful for that water this morning. I don't care if people think I'm abnormal. I'll be abnormal. I don't care. But really, we are. Let's just, I'm going to still tell you a secret. We are, we're operating normally. And we want them to come up to that norm. We want them to come up to that norm and get a pool in their sanctuary so they can get people in their water. Hallelujah. Come on. Huh. 
The body of Christ is so important. The house of the Lord is so important. Listen, if you're online listening to me this morning, I heard this the other day, and it really, really hit me. If the church is not your mother, then God is not your father. Does that make sense? If the church is not your mother, the gathering together of the, of the church is not your mother, then God cannot be your father. Because it's his will that we come together as a body, as a people to grow from each other, to help each other, to glean from each other, to learn all the things and, and, and help each other get out of these bondage that we're in. It's nothing wrong to be in a bondage other than you're not supposed to be. There's no shame in it. There's no condemnation. But listen, we're here to help each other get out of those type of things. In the body first. We got plenty of time. We're in no hurry. We got plenty of time to go out in the highways and byways. But we have to get it right here first because what's happened in the past is people have gotten into a place where they've, they've, they've said they've got all these things and they learn all this stuff and they're like, oh, we're going to go out and we're going to minister. But they're so wounded inside that they're like the blind leading the blind. They're going out and trying to bring healing on somebody that they need healing for. I'm going to help you with your sexual addiction Why I have one. No, that's not going to work. Brother, that's not going to work. You can't do it that way. We need to have complete healing in this house. So when we go out, we know something. We know somebody. We know what to do. We know how to pray. We know how to speak healing over people. We know how to speak life over people. All right, let's read some Bible. <laughs> yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm going to break this down a little bit. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, starting with verse 1. It says, Though I speak the tongue of man and angels. Talking about prayer language. Sometimes it, prayer language is referred to as tongues in the Bible. But I have not love. I have become as a sounding brass or a clinging cymbal, meaning I've been out of whack and out of tune and it all is a bunch of just noise. So though I speak tongues of angels and men, but do not have love, I have become as a sounding brass or a clinging cymbal. But do not have love. It's a key part in that. And though I have the gifts of prophecy, some of you have them, some of you don't. And understanding, some of you understand mysteries, some of you don't. And knowledge, some of you have knowledge and some of you don't. And though I have faith, all faith it says. So I can move a mountain from here to here. But I don't have love. It says, I am nothing. I don't want to be nothing. I want to be something for him. And though I bestow all of my goods, though I give everything I have away. There's been times, I've, I read a book one day, and it was called the, the, the Treasure Principle. And my friend told me, he said, here, I want you to read this book. And when you read it, do not do one thing for a month after you read it. Because I read that book, and I wanted to give, I, she didn't know, but we are going to move in a tent and live in a tent, and everything would be gone. That's how much that book impacted me. I said, Whoa. So you sell everything and get rid of everything and give to the poor and give all these things. And though I give my body to be burned, to be burned. You know, people did that. People were burned in the Bible for Jesus. And some were burned not for Jesus. They use some people as a road and they use them as candlesticks to light up the way. Believe it or not, there was a place where they hung people up on these poles and they lit them up on fire just to have light to get through that. But even if you do that and you don't have love, it don't profit you one thing. It profits you nothing. And this is what love does. Love suffers long. Do you suffer long? Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely. The love does not seek its own. It's not provoked. The world will try to provoke you. To get you to do stuff you're not supposed to do. 
He'll poke and prod at you and get you. Get. The world knows some of you wives know how to push buttons too. And some of you husbands know how to push buttons too. Let's just, let's try to stop that. It's not provoked. It thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity. Where do you get your pleasure from? Where does your pleasure, where's your entertainment, where's your pleasure come from? Is it in iniquity? Is it in seeing iniquity? Is it in someone else being hurt? Is it in, what, what, is your, what does it come from? It says, does not rejoice in iniquity, in sinful things, but rejoices in truth. Right here. It says, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. This is the kind of love that I'm talking about this morning. When we, ma- when we image Jesus and we um, mirror Jesus, we can have this kind of love to where we never fell in love. People might receive us wrong, and there might be times we make a mistake, but if our heart is true and pure, we're always giving something out in love. We might be misunderstood in that love because of the lack of love that they are are understanding or the tainted version of love that they comprehend. And some of us have understood love that way. We've understood love in a tainted version. I remember growing up in a tainted version of love when I got my whippings from my mom. And she thought she was loving me by giving me the whippings. Part of her was. But when it went overboard, when they turned to bruises, then that wasn't love anymore. But love never fails. You go down to verse 13, it says, And now abide in faith, hope, and love. And out of these three, which one's the greatest? Which one's the greatest? Love. love is the greatest of all these three. Aren't you grateful for that this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We must remember that we are servants to them first. As we're fulfilling the call that God has, as we're fulfilling the walk that he has for us. We must show people when they walk in the door that we're ready to serve them. If you have your Bibles, turn over to Matthew 22, chapter 22, verse 37. You ever wonder why we're here? You ever wonder why we're even on the planet of the, you know, this planet? I mean, does anybody ever wonder why, why we're even here? It's like, like, really, I mean, just think, you think about it. It's like, well, why am I actually here? I mean, I know my purpose, but some of you might not know your purpose. So there's simple instructions in the this, in this scripture. There's simple instructions, and we're, we're going to go through it. Um, there's two commandments here. So the first thing that we must do, and this is why we're here, this is why we're in the city, this is what we're here to do, and this is how we're supposed to love. It says, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. There's a second commandment, but I want you to know that first commandment right there, we must learn that first commandment first. If you don't love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, you're not even going to be able to come close to fulfilling the second commandment. So the first thing is we must have that relationship with God. The first thing is we must learn how to love, learn how to have identity, learn how to have freedom and bondage from the things of bondage, and learn how to have the encounters with God and walk in those encounters with him. And that's going to happen here in this body. We're going to learn how to love. We're going to learn how to walk in our identity, knowing who we are and whose we are, knowing that the enemy is going to try to lie to you, but you don't have to believe the lie from the enemy because truth says you're a son and a daughter and you were dreamed of before the foundations of the world. That's what this Bible says. So when you understand what love really is and understand how to love, first, this commandment says, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all of your mind. Then he said, love your neighbor as yourself. I've ministered to thousands of people, literally thousands of people in my lifetime. 
And across the board, most of the people that I come in contact with don't know how to love themselves. In the water, I've heard testimony after testimony of people who said they forgave everybody else, but they never forgave themselves. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how deep you went or how, how far down below rock bottom you were reaching up to grab surface. It doesn't matter how, what you've done. If you are a Christian, you've walked in this first part, loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul. If you are living that kind of a thing, all the stuff that you did is gone because Jesus forgave every single bit of it. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter the deepest, darkest sin. It doesn't matter. He forgave it. So now in that forgiving you must forgive yourself. Amen. Amen. I'm going to take a moment. Let's close our eyes. Father, you know right now everything that everyone has thought of. As soon as we talked about that, the sin that they committed that maybe they haven't forgiven themselves of, Lord, the things that they're, they've walked in, they haven't truly forgiven themselves. Father, we thank you right now that you're moving that you're moving on their hearts right now, that, that people are right now saying, I forgive me. I forgive me. Because listen, if you don't forgive yourself, how can your Father forgive you? Your people too. So Father, we thank you that we can forgive ourselves and we can be sin-free because you paid the ultimate price walking to the cross in love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. So now that you've forgiven yourself, now we're going to go out and we're going to love on others. Now we're going to learn how to go out and love on others. What do you do? I mean, what do you do to love others? What do you do to love other people? I mean, what is your, what is your game plan? Do you have a plan on how you're going to go out and love? Now you love God with everything in you, all your heart, soul, and mind. So we've got that out of the way. God is your centerpiece. You're not bringing him in and he's on the outside. You've got all your, your stuff in the center. And, and when you need him because something breaks down or something happens or you run low on this, or run low on that. You're like, God, can you come here a minute? No, no, this thing is out here and you're saying, God, can you go out here and help me with this thing that's out here on the outside because I want to stay right here close to you. I want to stay in the light because you're in the light. I don't want to be in the shadows anymore. God, I like being in the light. I like being close to you because there's no darkness around you. What are you doing to show them that you love them. I saw an act of compassion yesterday. I saw a young man tell a waitress or tell the manager of the, the restaurant how good the waitress was. Waitress come up and said to that man, said, the other waitress that was just up here said she'd never seen someone so Nice. Never met people so nice. That's the kind of love that we're supposed to show. When we walk into a place and out of a place, we change it. Why? Because we love. You know, Bill Johnson in, um, in, in Bethel in Redding, California, taught his youth, taught his people to go out and tip 100% when they went out to eat. The youth took this to hand. They took charge, and they, they, every time they went out, whether it was 10 of them or 2 of them, they seen how much money they had together, and they ordered only with half of that money. Like, okay, we got 40 bucks. Okay, we're going to get half of it automatically as a tip. So what can we order for 20 bucks? And it changed the culture of that region. These restaurants are still, today, the managers are like, I'm getting people who are coming. They're not coming just because they're getting good tips. They're coming because they're getting treated like valuable people, like God loves them, even if they make a mistake and dump water all over your lap. That shouldn't change what we do as Christians and giving a, a, giving a blessing to someone. I mean, if someone comes in and, and their waitress comes in and they dump water on your lap, I mean, like, you're not getting no tip from me. No, we can't be like that. That's just not how God operated. He's like, man, you dumped water all over. That was cold. 
Bless you. He loves you. I love you. We're supposed to operate in such a valuable way of love that it just, it changes the people around us. So as we come together as a body, we learn how to um, acclimate ourselves with one another. And we've been together for quite a while now, and some of you don't even know the other people's first names. We need to fix that. If I don't know your name, it's because I don't remember. <laughs> Forgive me. Forgive them too, if they don't remember your name. It, hasn't, it wasn't that I haven't tried. Shelly will come up to me. My pastor, my pastor Shelly will come up to me and she'll say, do you remember so-and-so they got in the water here? And I'm like, okay, <clears throat> first of all, there have been 4,000 people get in the water. And no, I don't remember. <laughs> and I'm sorry I don't remember, but it was just last week or a week or two weeks ago. So, um, yeah, so listen. We must come together as a people. We must get to know one another because in that, we're going to be able to help each other do this part. Reach out. You should be compassionate toward people. Are you compassionate toward the people around you? I mean, are you really compassionate? Just decide to be compassionate toward people around you and listen. Listen. Listen to what they're saying. Pay close attention to what they're saying. Some, this is what we do. And, and listen, I'm not getting on anybody because I'm, I'm probably just as bad about this as anybody else. But when someone comes up to us from the, from the world, even from, the, from this house, and they're, and they're speaking to you, listen to what they're saying. Don't try to think of a story to trump their story. But listen to what they're saying. Sometimes we don't have to say anything. Sometimes we can, we can hear what they're saying. And man, I'm like, you know, because people will tell me stuff. Like, man, I got like 2,500 stories I want to share with them. Like, man, I can tell you this, 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 this. And God's just like, shut up. Just shut up and let them t- say something. And then bless them and walk away. So that's one thing we can do. Decide to be compassionate and listen and pay close attention to our neighbors, to what they're saying. Share a meal. Invite someone over to your house. I mean, invite them in your home. People love that. People love to go to other people's houses. People love to see and know a little bit more about people around them. When I was growing up, and most of you, some of you, half of you, maybe a quarter of you, I don't even know how many of you, but when I was growing up, listen, I'm 54, I'll be 54 this year. When I was growing up, it was like an, my house, my home was like an open, like an open thing. It's like, man, it's like, you didn't have to like make a schedule to come to somebody's house. You just popped into somebody's house. You just like, you just like drove up and said, hey, so-and-so's here. Hey, come on in. Didn't matter what you were doing. You just invited them in. They just come in. But now it's a by appointment only. We need to get away from that by appointment only thing. Uh, can I come over? Uh, why? What? <laughs> Just kind of want to hang out a little bit and spend some time with you. <laughs> Why? So, I mean, that's just what it is, you know. I mean, it, we need to learn how to love a little bit better. If you work at a restaurant, listen, please, for the love of God, welcome the person that comes up to the window. Welcome to McDonald's. We're happy to have you here. What can I get for you today? This is what I get. I mean, I'm like, what, what, what? And you go up to the window and they're on their phone. He's like, all right, that would be, I mean, they, I could have a gun point to them. They wouldn't even know because they're just like, yeah, that'll be, that'll be, today, that'd be $50 and 25 cents. You know, I'd hoard a Happy Meal and they're, and they're just like taking your money and throwing it in. But they're on their phone. I mean, it's like people can't get away from this. Take this thing and throw it. It's good. It's got a lot of good use, but. <laughs> You see the families at the restaurants, every, the whole family. I mean, they're all gathered together. God, we're going to get together. We're going to love on one another. And every one of them. I don't know if they're texting each other or what they're doing, but every one of them on the phone. Shelly, she, my beautiful bride, she, she uses this as a network system. She, she very well with using her phone to network out. And there's times that we'll be right next to each other. And I do have to text her just to get her attention to talk to, you know. <laughs> I went too far with that one, but no, listen. (laughs) 
Share a meal. Go out and share a meal. Invite someone over. Take someone out to eat. Do something nice for somebody. And, 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 and I can only tell you of some of my stories because they're my stories. But, um, and I don't know all of your stories because I haven't been able to hang out with a lot of you enough. But um, it, it's really cool. Listen, look for, look for opportunity. Listen, to not, to not boast yourself up, but look for opportunity to bless somebody without them knowing. Like I tip 100%, they know it, but I let them know Jesus loves them, they're amazing, and, and I, there's, a, there's a message behind it. If I can't bless them, I probably won't tip them like that because I want to be able to have a, now, now, now you can, it's not even personal anymore. Now it's like, you tip off this machine. I'm like, no, I, they're like, um, you can do the machine. I said, no, I want to I I talk to you when we're done. I don't want to go through the machine. I want to talk to them. I want to tell them how much Jesus loves them. I want to make eye contact with them and let them know how valuable they are, how good they served, how a blessing it was to meet them and see them. That's what we should do. We should get away with all this impersonal stuff. Everything is so impersonal. And please don't get offended if I do send you a text and I got capital letters in it or three exclamation marks behind it. I'm not saying nothing other than just texting. I mean, it's like there's no specific meaning behind the capital letters. I guess it, in the world, it means you're hollering at somebody. I don't know what three exclamation marks means, but it's improper, but it's just me saying, I love you. It's just, it's just three, that's what it is. So after every sentence, like three, I say, I love you after every sentence I say to you in a text. That's just who I am. I was out the other day, and I was at, at um, um, the store, and this guy forgot his wallet. He had his kid with him. He forgot his wallet out there. So I just, he, he told the person, he said, I got to go outside and get my wallet. And the guy's like, all right, I'll watch it for you. And I just went. I said, tell him Jesus loves him. And I walked away. Don't know who the guy is. Don't know nothing about him. But that's the kind of love that we're supposed to display in the city. Literally, we can become a people that people have heard. Like I go, I go up to, I go up to Greenwood and um, people know of Life of Love in Greenwood. Oh, I've heard of you guys down there. Yeah, you're down there. You got that water immersion. You got this here. Yeah, people are getting healed there. I hear that in other places. We're, it's spreading out, but it's going to spread even more the more that you love people well outside of this place. It's going to spread even more. And I don't, I listen, when I go out, I don't tell them, um, listen, when I, when I bless somebody, I don't say, hey, do you want to go to church? You know, I ask them if they know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And if they say no, I ask them if I can pray for them and introduce them to Jesus. If they say yes, I introduce them to Jesus. If they say no, I just wipe the dust off my feet and I walk away and I pray for them anyhow. But this is the thing. I don't, I don't say I'm a pastor. I don't say, hey, why don't you come to my church? I just tell them that Jesus loves them. And I let them figure that out on their own. I don't want to direct them because God might need them at Jeff Floyd's church. First Nazarene. They might need them there. He might need them somewhere else. My goal in this region is to take five pastors and five churches and all of us go out in the region together calling on doors. I love knocking on doors. All five of us go. And we're standing there, five pastors from five different churches, handing out a pamphlet. Come to any one of them. Come check us out and see what God's doing. Come check all of us out and see what God's doing. That's my heart is to just reach out to people, just to get them in the house of the Lord so the church becomes their mother and God becomes their father. Be peaceful to people. Forgive and let grudges go. Quit being angry at people. Have a smile on your face. I mean, can we smile? We see all of you. It doesn't matter what you're going through, just smile. People read it. Shelly and I were at the, and, and, and the only, the only reason I tell these stories is because I only know my own stories. We were at the, we were, I went to the doctor. She finally got me to go to the doctor the other day, and I'm getting some stuff checked out. But um, So we go to the doctor, and um, we get done, and we go to the other end. And this is, this is valuable. If you see Jesus on somebody, let them know. If you see Jesus radiating out of somebody, encourage them. Let them know. I see Jesus all over you. So here we are. We're, 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 we're at the, the checkout, and, um, and this girl sitting back here, and I, just, I, I could tell she was struggling. And I don't know if she's here today. She said she might be here. 
but I, I, I couldn't tell if she, I could tell she was struggling, but I knew she loved Jesus. I just seen Jesus on her. And I said, I want you to know that I see Jesus all over you. And she just started crying. And I said, there's anything we can pray for you. And we, we, and we prayed for her right there. And she had an encounter with God right there as she was checking us out. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to love like that. Be peaceful. Bring peace to people. Show them that we're not an angry bunch of people. I mean, I've seen some, I've seen some angry Christians. Have anybody ever seen an angry Christian? Man, they're like some of the worst. I didn't know about um, speaking in tongues and all this stuff, you know, before. I mean, I knew of it, but I, I, the church that I went to years ago, um, it, the, they told me if I spoke in tongues, I was going to go to hell. That was a lie from the pit of hell. And, and so I had someone come up to me, and they said, uh, this, is, this is no joke. This guy come up to me, and he said, <laughs> Have you received Jesus since, or have you received Holy Spirit since you've been saved? And I'm like, I wanted to say, I don't even know who that is, <laughs> you know, but I didn't know because I wasn't, I didn't, wasn't, I didn't pray in the spirit. I didn't, I didn't understand that part of it. I didn't know the spiritual side of God until I met my bride. I knew the Bible, but I didn't know the spiritual side. And now I don't even know if I knew the Bible from what I'm learning now. And so, so have, have you... <laughs> Now, have you spoken tongues since you, since you got saved? And I said, no. I said, do you? He said, yeah, I sure do. And I said, let me hear you. He got real quiet. He goes, well, I can't right now. I said, you mean you got God inside of you and the Holy Spirit inside of you, and you can't speak what you're saying to you? I should be able to speak? Well, not right now. I, I, well, what do you got to do to gunger it up? I mean, <laughs> I was kind of mocking him, you know, because, I mean, I was like, what do you got to do to gunger it up? I said, I tell you what, if someone comes and ask, I can't wait for someone to come and ask me that question. I'm going to tear it up. I'm going to tear it up. They're going to be, what just happened to me? Then they're going to interpret what I said. Share the gospel everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, share the gospel. You don't have to invite people to church. Just share the gospel. Ask people, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Get out of a comfort zone and say, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I mean, I don't know how many people come up to my house when we were doing the, the build out, and I don't know how many people come up, all these contractors and all that stuff, and every one of them, I was praying with them, asking them, you know Jesus. It doesn't hurt. What's the worst that gonna, someone's going to say? No, and I don't want to know. Okay. You're lost. I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? I mean, you've been hollered at before. I mean, I've had guns drawn on me, people. I've gone to the door. I literally go door to door, knocking on doors. And I've had people like, what do you want? I'm just, I'm just inviting you to church, man. I'm just inviting you to church. Or I've had them on the other side. And I don't even want to be this kind of Christian. On the other side of the door, and you knock on the door, and they say, we already go to church. Well, if you do, come out and talk to me. They thought I was like some kind of a witness or something. Hallelujah. And so, stay in love with Jesus. Stay in your calling, though. Stay in your lane. Stay in the place that God wants you to be. Make the world a brighter place. You know my brother Randy here, when he steps outside in the morning, this is it. When Randy steps outside of his threshold of his home, the world becomes a brighter place. It really does. And I really, I thought this morning, I thought, wow, how powerful. I mean, look at his smile. I mean, he's got, when he's up here, he's speaking, he's like, he's just serious. I mean, he's, when he's up here, he's serious. But he's always got this smile outside of this, like, this, this platform where he's up here, like, God said. But his smile is just, it's, it's contagious. So when he walks out of the house over the threshold, it's like the day gets brighter. And what if we do that collectively? I was thinking this morning, maybe we should do this. Maybe we should all collectively set a time, set our watches, and all of us just walk out at the exact same time and see what happens. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine? All right, five, four, three, two, whoa! It's like... I mean, it'd be awesome. So maybe we should do, maybe we should try to do that. Walk outside at the same time because Jesus lives inside of us and his light shines through us. And he's amazing. He's awesome. Hallelujah, Lord. Say it again. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes. So good. Oh, man. I'm way over.
I want to honor your time this morning. I'll take a few more minutes. Stay in the will of God. In the midst of ministering to one another, in the midst of ministering outside of these four walls, stay in love with God and stay in your calling. Stay in your lane. Stay where you're supposed to stay. There's a lot of things to see, and I understand that there's a lot of things in this world to see, and there's a little bit of time. The time spectrum that we're in is just a little segment of the time and all of time. And so I know that we want to see things, and I want you to go places, see things, adventure things. The possibilities are endless. Every day I want you to try something new, learn something new. Learn from your mistakes. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. But just learn from it. And walk past it and say, I put that mistake behind me in Jesus' name. Thank you for forgiving me and move on past the mistakes. Take responsibility for your mistakes. Don't put it off on someone else. Because of them, this is happening. Take responsibility. Take blame for your own mistakes. But learn from them. Be as lenient to others as they are to you. Or as you are to yourself. So be as lenient to others as you are to yourself. I mean, are you lenient on yourself? Most people are really, they give themselves a lot of grace. Give other people the same grace. Give them that same leniency that you give yourself. Don't hesitate to love and don't hesitate to ask somebody for love. I ask my wife all the time, will you just love on me right now? I make her, I make her, she is so busy, I make her stop. I mean, I literally stop her and say, you're not going anywhere until you love me. And her motor's running, and she's, you know, (laughs) finally she breaks away from the the bear hug. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with wanting to be loved. I am so loved by God. I really, I really, and this is a true statement. I am so, huh. I am so loved by God. I forgot what it's like not to be loved. I can't even imagine not to be loved. That's how much that he's loved me. Just stay in his will. You might be growing old, but don't let your heart grow old. Think about the future, but don't worry about it. Think about the past, but don't get lost in it. Yeah. Let's stand. I want you to remember this morning, above all this, Jesus walked to the cross. And he loved all the way. So do what he did. Glean from his word. Take his word to heart. Study it. Know it inside and out. Because in knowing the word, you're going to know God. You're going to know true love. You're going to know the value of who he is and who you are in him. In that place that he's created for you in his heart to rest. I want you to know this morning that you're all amazing. And you're loved by us. So love him this morning. Love yourselves. Love one another. I don't know if the ambient music's on or not, but I just want to, I want to do an altar call. I don't want to miss this morning. No, no, sir, the other day, I know that um, when you were here that you come up and prayed and No one come up and prayed with you. And I'd like for you to come up today. I want to be able to pray with you. While he comes up, is there anybody else that don't know Jesus? This young man come up on his own and and, uh, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to ask Jesus to come in his heart. And and, and I I want you to remember, you know, just... Sometimes when people are praying up here, we kind of leave them alone because they're, they're, they're talking to God, they're God. And, and sometimes we don't know the difference between someone, a first believer, and, and we don't know the difference. 
So let's be in the spirit and know what God's doing. Let's don't go touch everybody. Ask him permission to touch them first. But, but make sure that God is leading you to do that. God is directing you to do that. Is there anybody here that don't know Jesus Christ? Listen, we're going to walk through this series, Love, Identity, Freedom, Encounter. We're going to walk through this series and learn by the end of this series how to work together as a team, how to work together as a people, how to work together as a body. We're just part of the body. We're this little church is part of the body. Is there anybody else that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior or even wants to draw closer, wants to be closer? Anything that we've talked about today, you're having struggles forgiving yourself for some things you've done, come and let's, let us pray with you. There'll be people praying with you today. Shelly, if you get our prayer team together, Randy and these two David and Ashley Uve come on guys this is the time listen we're, we're just getting rid of all of it right now we're just getting rid of everything we're getting rid of everything we're saying God I want more of you I want more of you I want more of you I want to know how to love I want to know how to love I want to walk in my identity I want to be free from the bondage no matter what it is I want to be free I don't want to play games anymore. I don't want to play with God anymore. I don't want to trifle and sin anymore. I just want you, Jesus. Listen, some of us, sin is fun for a season. Sin is fun for a season, but it only lasts for a little while. So I'm grateful that Jesus paid the price for us to overcome that sin. I know we're a little bit over and you guys will be okay. In order for us to step into the next phase, we have to have victory in this house, in our own hearts. We have to be healed in our own hearts to be able to go out and reach a lost and dying world. We have to be healed. We cannot walk in woundedness. Listen, I know that I know that some of you are wounded and you don't even understand it. I remember a time when I was wounded and I was living in my overflow and I still had wounds in my heart. And I said, God, what is going on with me? And he said, you're bitter. And I'm like, bitter at what? He said, you're bitter at the church because your boys walked away from church because how they hurt you how the church hurt you. And I said, God, forgive me for that. Forgive me for being bitter at the church for tearing my kids away. Those places in my heart, even though I was living in overflow, I still had those wounds in my heart. God healed them. My heart's healed today. If you would look at my heart and look at my life, it was split down the middle. There's wound holes all like a machine gun just ravage my heart but God's healed every part of it every place he's healed it he's touched it and I'm grateful for that this week we'll leave the altar open there's people up here to pray for you I'm going to pray for this young man bless you guys come Wednesday and pray with us on Wednesday there's a group that gets together Saturday and pray so come and pray with us Come and be a part of this body and let's get together. Let's, let's invite each other out to dinner and love on one another. If someone can't make it, invite somebody else. Thank you guys. Love you so much. Bless you.